Hello, viewers of the internet, and welcome to the first episode of Rally Peru Time Trial, and I could show you turning the lights on on this vehicle, but it doesn't have them. Anyway, there we go, I think I've reset the vehicle somehow, and now the engines come on, because I don't quite know my controls, but there's the rear lights, they come on just fine, and the front lights, they don't come on at all, sadly, but we should be able to change to interior with you, there we go. I do know how to operate an Xbox controller, it's easier once you start using it, we set the camera, and we should be able to go in 3, 2, 1, and a go. I am using a manual transmission here, and this is the ETK i-series race track, whatever they're calling it these days, it's basically the highest end where we'll drive version of the car available and I'm getting a lot of understeer oh dear I did take this round before and it did get a lap so it is a very tough vehicle and it actually handles really well as well when it does slide it is controllable the racing slicks are a bit of a problem admittedly because this is not a rally car and oh dear I am, I am able to keep it under control though seriously this is easy Compared to some other things we'll have around here, this will be a walk in the park, really. And, oh dear. I, I don't quite know how to drive as well. <laughs> That's never going to help my chances. But I have pulled it through these first few corners without too major damage. Although I need to watch what I'm saying because I will curse myself forever. And I confuse my gear as, as well with Forza. Oh dear. Come on. I've just got two different gear change layouts for this and Forza, and it really does mess with my mind. But I think I know what I'm doing, vaguely enough. Come on. But as I say, we are getting through here. Before, I did just throw it off a cliff on the second lap and then give up, but now I'm slightly more determined. I will make it two laps with this, if the vehicle is capable enough of making it two laps breaking into here. I'm going wide again, but going wide is not a particular problem area as long as you can keep the vehicle under control like I can. When you are able to keep the vehicle under control, you can go wide and not really worry about it, but there's also the cliffs to contend with. Like here I'm going wide, but the issue there is I was getting close to a cliff. Thankfully it's such an easy vehicle to control, meaning even when I am pushing it to that cliff edge, it is not the worst vehicle to deal with. The race suspension here is surprisingly good though. We must remember this is not dirt suspension by any means and it's soaking up the bumps reasonably well. Although it will occasionally chuck the vehicle at an awkward angle as you perhaps might expect. I'm spending more time in fourth gear than I perhaps should. But I am able to navigate my way. Maybe doing a bit of cheeky corner cutting there. <laughs> but we're round. That's the important thing. Come on. Accelerating here. Oh dear, I need to break. I would say I broke too late there, but I am pushing it round here. Full turning lock and not much is happening. The, the understeer is more of a problem than I would have suspected knowing this vehicle. They've handled quite well before, either a little oversteer at times. You can control them when they get into the oversteer. Like there, you'll see, my tail was starting to get a little loose, but I was able to pull it back because the vehicle was easy enough about it. It wasn't demanding I'm some crazy high-end super race driver to do it. If you can even buy high-end race drivers, I don't know, I guess that would be an autopilot feature. Since it knows the car exactly, it knows its exact weak spots, exactly when it loses grip. I'm not that good, but I wish I was. Anyway, we are getting round here. As I was saying, the car is lovely, and the car does to a certain extent compensate for that. I think I've taken some front aero off. Hopefully it's only that. My radiator's not saying it's gone, where I could have really whisked it there. And... I've got away with that, so that's all all good. I can smash up the front a little and not worry about it, as long as my radiator's intact and the aero isn't 
completely horrendous and I think I just shifted up there because I was getting too much revs. You can get over rev damage here so I don't want to do that to the engine but it shouldn't be much of a problem with this car. I did have some problems with T-Series, but I think this stage is relatively kind in terms of over-rev damage, as in it doesn't really encourage your cars to get damaged. Here we have a very horrible section somewhere around here, where all the terrain just gets suddenly darker and there's a load of really dramatic bumps that may cause some damage to the vehicle. It got through fine last time, but that was last time. There's still a chance I could mess it up. Uh, oh dear. That seemed a lot worse than it was. It ultimately just got scooped into the air a little bit by the mountain, but things could have been worse. Here you'll see <laughs> really where the waist suspension is probably, I don't know, excelling outside its comfort zone, would I say? Because it really isn't the comfort zone of the waist suspension, but it is managing it just fine. You'll see we're not getting chucked into the air. We are just getting along the terrain. The front engine rear drive layout is perhaps helping here because when I did take front wheel drives around, boy did they get crushed up and destroyed. This time we don't seem to have the vehicle getting crushed up and destroyed so that's always a positive. And oof. Getting a few bumps I don't like here but it is still under control. I can still control where it's going. Even when it is losing control though, it's mainly because there's wheels in the air. It's not like certain vehicles, high-end SBR4, might be where they just randomly chuck you off the course for no reason whatsoever. Come on, flooring it into here, I get a nice slider, but I slide a bit too much and now I'm wide and come on, shift down a bit because that was far too high a gear to be in for such a tight section. Come on. As I say, it's getting chucked about, but there's nothing particularly wrong with it. Now, if a vehicle flies off the course, I will reset it onto the road and basically time it between the times it's on its wheels because it's the best compromise I think I can manage. Speaking of which, the vehicle survived that, okay? So... Now, that's a perfect time to show what I was trying to do before, if I go to my keyboard. Am I even on here? Ah, ah, control C and shift C. They're two completely different things. Someday, I will remember this. Now, because of the nature of that crash, I'm not going to reset it. I've already taken enough time basically showing you the problem. But it slid down there quite easily. Trying to reset it, I would more likely do damage to there, I think. So I'm just going to resume from this point and hope to get a better second lap. Which it should be able to do because it's a very tough vehicle. You may have seen from the exterior there, nothing was really majorly wrong. I may have even had my front aero still on the car. This is an impressively tough vehicle considering what it is. I say that as I pushed it onto the grass. So... I don't really need to push it on the first lap. I just need to save some fuel, I guess, save some parts from serious damage, and I'll be fine. Oh, that was a that it felt horrible, but it, I don't think it was actually that horrible to the car. Hard to say. Although my steering does feel slightly out of alignment to the left, it feels like it's pulling, and that is not good. But it's. It's light enough damage that I don't think it's going to stop me on my quest for speed. Will anything stop me on my quest for speed? Probably, but it won't be that. This is a nice car. It's actually a lot nicer to drive over here than I remember, and I'm pretty sure this is on racing slick tyres, so remember, these tyres are by no means designed for this terrain. I was complaining about the understeer early on. Maybe I just wasn't realising how tight the corners were, because... In hindsight, the fact that it is managing to maintain grip around these corners and the fact that it's managing to stay stable and stay composed is really an impressive feat. Well, that was something, again, that could have gone seriously wrong. You saw there was a wax around there, which I just managed to avoid. Things can go horribly wrong at any moment. 
and that's what I want to try and avoid. I can see some bonnet damage now on the front left. You can probably see it as well. It's just the bonnet's sticking up a bit more than the front left fender. And that is okay. As I say, visual damage is fine. It's just we don't want to go beyond visual damage. And this is a really nasty hill, which I've managed to somehow avoid mentioning until this point. This eats your car if it is not good enough. And I need to shift down. Come on. This has no major problems getting up here, although I am still slightly concerned. Third gear and flooring, it seems to be working. Basically, it's easier than going back and having to try and get a one-up, so I was just keeping it in third and hoping, and it paid off ultimately. Although, you could feel the weird tyres spinning there, probably as much as I could. It was just spinning them and spinning them, and although I ultimately got a result, it was not the most efficient way to take the hill. As I say, this lap is about survival now, since I've already had a bit of a crash. And the next lap can be about getting properly good speed, so... Well, things like that can be about learning. And... That could have gone really horribly wrong. I just stopped paying attention for one moment and that happens. But just briefly look here, it looks like my front arrow has crumpled under. The radiator is somehow fine, despite what four point threw. Yeah, that was a good chance to examine the car, though. But I seriously thought I'd thrown it off. It's just this car is so forgiving. If it was a less forgiving car, I would have flown off by now. Maybe I'm not at the peak of my career or anything. I don't know. Come on. Why is it struggling to climb here? I'm just guessing it's a one-up. I'm guessing it's a slight hill, but I had no one-up at all. So that could be why. Come on. I really hope it's not engine problems that have somehow occurred. Yeah, I'm just thinking that person in, what was it, Car Mechanic Simulator, which you'll be seeing soon, had a car that was supposedly taken through off-road terrain and it weren't designed for it, so he scraped up everything and you have to change all the parts. This is like that, only it's not an SUV, and far more of it is intact than that car. That's how tough it is, though. If people can destroy an SUV on this kind of terrain, but this keeps on chugging along. It really is good old German build quality, this, as, as you would imagine, you know. as This is the kind of car that earned the Germans a great reputation for quality, because it's just brilliant and undeniably brilliant. I, I can't fault it for what it is. It's doing so amazingly well around this terrain. I guess it could have more grip, but at the same time, it's just by no means designed for this kind of terrain. So, grip would never be perfect. And I'm going to make a second lap. That is undeniable. Also. But I do like the sound, mind. It's just, it's very nice. Oh dear. I thought that could end a lot worse because I basically had my front end lifting up. And I couldn't tell what was going on past it. There could have been a rock face past it that I would fly directly into and destroy the radiator, if not the car. But thankfully there wasn't. Yeah. Part of this car is getting lucky, admittedly, because the suspension isn't designed for it, so you get the wrong bump, and even though it's tough enough to handle it, even though it's a well enough made car to handle it, there's always a case of something being too much, and it just slightly messes me up, as opposed to the car. Oh dear, dear, we're going too quick. Managed to somehow recover that. Fourth gear seems to be a good gear to be in at this place, so I'll probably need to focus on the road as opposed to changing gear. Probably the better way to go about things. And... Oh dear. Come on. I'm not sure how I'm going to time it if it's a second lap. I'm going to use the video timing because it's a good way to time these things. So, you'll see after, hopefully, when I get the leaderboard up that what the times will be. This was better than a Maluch I did when I tried it before, but 
as I say, now I'm not going to throw it off on the second lap. I'm focused enough, and I know the vehicle now more than I did on the first lap, even if it is slightly damaged. And it actually feels straighter than it did before. Either that was a terrain messing with it, or some damage has occurred that has straightened it out, or it just hit a bump that fixed whatever was wrong with it. It's hard to say exactly, and that was a nice corner there. See, I've learned how to use the power a bit better, as you'll see there. I'm using the power to push it around the corner as much as I'm using the steering. I didn't know to do that on the first lap. I was slightly scared of throwing it off. Now, I'm still being careful, but I know how to push this around corners in ways I just didn't back then. Ooh. And as I say that, I've messed up. Thankfully, I don't think it's major enough to cause any true damage to a time. It was a bit of a we scoot, but, you know, we get through it, we recover, and keep going. Come on. Oh, there's some nasty bumps, so as I said, really that was just me trying to carry too much speed, I think, but it was also the bumps getting in my way. It's not a healthy car visually, I guess you could say. It sure wouldn't be the nicest on a used car website. It would probably be one of the last to go, let's be honest, and for good reason <laughs> with what I'm putting it through. But it survived. I mean, the major mechanical components, the steering, the engine, the driveline, the suspension, all of those bits are fine. The radiator as well. I guess you could say it's part of the engine, but the radiator is doing fine. It's keeping the car cool enough. And it's not broken yet. Oh dear. Come on. Just about managed to recover it through there somehow. And this is not going too badly, I have to say. Uh, maybe I should shift up into a higher gear or at least get away from the edge. No, I'm in a high gear. What to do now? Oh, that was nasty. I think that was mainly just a bit of chassis damage and door damage. But it felt shocking going over that. And it would probably destroy a waste driver's spine if the bumps hadn't already done that. I was surprised that didn't break some of the mechanical though, just hearing it. I was, I was going over it and then I heard all the noise and then I realised it was just that area that had gone, thankfully. Yeah, it's always a whisk though. When we're going over a tight winding rally stage like this, there's always a whisk. I'm going to either do something stupid, or the course is just going to throw up a surprise that I don't quite see coming and take me out because of it. Now, these vehicles, as I say, they're undeniably excellent. Especially in the higher end trims, they make great track cars. We have, they have the all-wheel drive versions, but... The all-wheel drive versions, I feel, are notably less pure. I feel they understeer a bit too much, but they are incredibly fast. And if you want just raw speed, they are some of the quickest cars around. If only there's a hill climb version of it, that's the one thing I feel the game is lacking. And, and look at us now, talking about random things because a vehicle is just that easy to drive. Oof. I feel that could have been the same as the door smasher we had because... It looked like it at first, and slowly around here. That had potential to get me stuck in a nasty situation, but no. Again, we just keep on going and keep on talking. How am I motor mouthing for this long? I'm not really sure. I've probably lost most of my viewers now, but it keeps on going. Come on. Yes. I feel slightly ungrippy, if that's even a word. And it just pulls its way up. I mean... <laughs> Who knew it was the greatest rally car ever? Who, whoever knew? Oof. No, suspension save me. <laughs> that had potential to go wrong and go wrong quick, but the vehicle is too forgiving. Yeah, it's too forgiving to me, really. I should have been punished long ago <laughs> for my treatment of this car. But hey, it hasn't punished me. Also, it has a wall cage, so even when it does decide to punish me, if it decides to punish me, which it probably won't, let's be honest, I have some protection from the elements. Yeah, that is probably one of the disadvantages over a modern ETK, though. The modern ones are undeniably safer in a crash without a wall cage. It's just the way things have changed, although I would much prefer this to be 
the light sports car of my dreams than those because they just don't have much soul to me. This car has a very ETK soul, whereas the others have kind of become so modern, so moderated that they have not got the soul of this vehicle. And that's possibly why I don't love them so much. I get the tail out very wide there. Oh, that was a nasty section. I think I've been in that kind of dirt area before, and it really does just grab your car, and it tries not to let go. This vehicle, as always, did an excellent job of freeing itself, but it really does not want to let go of your car when you get it back there. And can we... Oh, dear. Maybe I should best slow down. I'm feeling like I'm slightly at loss of control and going fairly quick. That was nice through there. Slight loss of control due to all the bouncing, but it held a line and it held a racing line that I was happy with. And I think I went too wide here for a second time. But again, we can just climb around this course like a little mountain goat, even. Maybe I should nickname this a mountain goat. Because it just keeps on going. It just doesn't give up even if it has had enough. You know, you've got to go and feed your little mountain goat kids and keep on living. Come on. That, that section is always fun, but it can destroy your car if you have something pretty flimsy and weak, I will admit. And I... I'm now taking a far too wide line because I've completely messed that up. I think this is where I slid off before, so I'm already at an improvement on the first lap. I had that little almost spin near the start of this one, but as I say, I don't think it's near enough to cause major damage to the kind of time I'm able to set. And can we recover from here? Ooh, that grabbed my car quite nicely. Another thing I'm not mentioning much about this vehicle is... I do only have rear drive, as it chucks me all over the place. I do only have rear drive. There are all-wheel drive versions of this car, but this is rear drive, and that's probably why it's oversteering. I can imagine an all-wheel drive ETKI series topping the table. They are that good to drive, and they are that quick to drive, so that is why... The hill climb vehicles can be very competitive as well on the road courses, but I don't imagine those being so competitive off-road. Now, now I'm round to thinking of it, the Sunburst as well, an all-wheel drive Sunburst could do very well around here. Although last time I drove one of those, it was surprisingly oversteer without ESC. Which again brings me back on to this car, because this has no ESC, it has ABS. Or maybe not even ABS in this particular trim, but... Certain models of it have ABS, but there's no ESC, yet it still grips well. That is something that's the most impressive about these cars. The technology of a modern car just isn't here, but they still manage to handle better than a modern car. Oh, that was that walk again. I was pushing it ever closer to it by the looks of it. Closer than I were before, definitely, and I've gone wide here, but... As I was saying earlier, you can get away with going wide in this car because it's so forgiving. And if you know how to recover, then it's not really going to hurt your time too much. Especially not compared to falling off the course, that's for sure. Ellie couldn't get around here as best as I can. And trying to keep it, trying to keep it on the grip. And if I can keep it through third gear for this whole section, I would be reasonably happy. That felt better than the first lap, although I did kind of bounce it off the wall. It felt like I had more grip for a lot of the kind of climb than the first lap. This will almost certainly be the quickest lap of the two. If it isn't, then I might just have to give up timing everything in general because it really should be. And that felt like I got the rear wheel, rear right wheel caught in a very awkward position, but as I say, it's tough. He's not going to have the wheels knocked off by any simple things. I've still not taken my radiator out of that by the looks of things. And that's with all this bouncing on a very low car with perhaps questionable suspension by this point. Yeah, I was too high a gear there. Flooring it through here because it feels like a slightly awkward section where I can get out now and... What's left of my vehicle is doing remarkably well. 
Yeah, I, I imagine this is something I'll get to the finish line. I'll get out the vehicle and I'll find out it's utified. <laughs> or something weird at the back of it and it's still handled well. Oh dear. Are we still going? <laughs> we are indeed. Yeah, I was concerned there for a moment. I was throwing it in the ditch and I was concerned that would take our lap time out. And how has my radiator survived that? I've got no smoke, no radiator warnings in the corner. That should not have happened. There's some weird powers at play. The bean gods are being nice to me for once. Even if they are a bit weird and playful at times and like to throw me into a walk just for the fun of it. Come on. Here's a timing section which does absolutely nothing. I'm, I'm getting distracted, I know. I'm probably past my point of con point of consciousness. No, I'm obviously conscious. I'm driving past my point of sanity. Uh, it, it started getting a bit wobbly there. I feel like the weird white wheel or something may just be hanging on by a thread at this point because it does not feel happy back there, at least at high speeds. But I will get to the line with a decent time. Two fairly minor crashes. That's not too bad, all in all, for a vehicle. And the fact that this is coping with what I'm putting through it is the most surprising of anything. If you watch it back and count up all the injuries this car has had, it would destroy weaker cars. Weaker cars with this kind of treatment would have been destroyed on the first lap, but this is so resilient and it's so forgiving that I can treat it horribly like I am and get away with it and just keep driving. I'm amazed though at that second recent crash I had back there that I was just able to get it back onto the wheels and keep going. I honestly thought I would at least be stuck on my side, but it didn't get stuck on its side. It just went back onto its wheels and it said, I'm ready for more. And indeed it was. Oh, there goes my windscreen. The windscreen didn't make it, but the car did. Excellent. Yeah, it's just like the windscreen. I've had enough, and the windscreen just goes. Do we still have working lights? That is the question. There we go. I didn't reset it. That's good. I have one working tail light. I think I must have knocked that on a mountain or something. Surprised I still got my weird bumper after that. And there is the radiator and what looks like the intercooler. Both in fine condition, but my front bumper is, well, all crushed up inside there by the looks of things. Yeah, that is not in a comfortable position. So if we put the handbrake on, maybe I can open the engine bay and show you the beastie that powers it. Come on, that was a bit weak. There we go. There's our engine. It's an inline six, in case you hadn't noticed. And overall, this is a very, very impressive vehicle. And I'm pretty sure it'll take a real monster to beat it. But with that said, on to the next vehicle. Okay, so here I have my very own poo-coloured hot wad. Yep, a 450 horsepower Malooch. What could possibly go wrong with such a high-powered monster of a car? Ooh, is that Campbell on the back, I see. It certainly looks like it. Anyway, as I was saying, here's the interior. Everything will be perfect now we have loads of power in such a tiny car. I think it's a lot more than the ETK by about 100 horsepower anyway. Let's go in three, two, one, and a go. There we are. And can we manage to keep this under control? Hopefully so. I did manage to wall it at the first corner when I tried this before, so hopefully we won't do that again, that kind of thing. Really, I just didn't realise what it was. It's a top-heavy, slightly top-heavy, high-performance tower of a car. I don't know, my PC probably has a lower centre of gravity than this, let's be honest. So, can we manage to get around it? There's a bit of understeer, like I noticed with the ETK immediately, but it's manageable. There is just so much grip here, though, compared to the EDK. Probably due to the rear engine, rear drive, drive line, and I'm having to slow down here. There's so much power available. There honestly is. Oh, dear. 
Going to try and make this corner. Fairly nice through there. Could have been a lot worse. Oh dear. I notice it likes to fly butt down as well. It's just the nature of a rear-engined car. There's not much I can change about it. It does have its benefits though, that's for sure. Although rear-engined cars can always at times be unpredictable. So I'll have to remember that when I'm trying to go quite fast. It feels like it lacks just frontal weight, which is... I guess entirely true, because it probably does lack front weight. Oh dear. Can we? Yes. I should not have accelerated as much as I did. Oh dear. Are we going back onto your wheels? Yes, we are. Ugh. Cliff. <laughs> Cliff edge. Oh dear. And I need to remember which way is forwards as well. That would be preferable. I think the vehicle's okay, but it does like to steer to the right now. That was when I was being careful, though, honest. I'll do a lap with this. Will I do two? Who knows? If it'll do two, I would be slightly surprised. Because this Malooch was not meant to handle this crazy amount of power, and I have no wall cage or anything. <laughs> I guess I got lucky with that wall, but you can see the front left corner has already started to... Well become a different car. Oh, that, that was a lucky escape, I guess. I think I just, I'm not really watching the speedometer, I will admit, so that's probably why. I'm probably going so much faster than I could believe, but it just doesn't feel it. Because basically all you see is shaking in this, so you never know whether you're shaking at 120 miles per hour or shaking at one. 100 miles per hour. <laughs> I don't know. What did I just say? My mind's being funny. Come on, we will get it round here. It felt nicer than oh, the ETK through there, which is an odd thing for me to say. Nothing's nicer than the ETK, but apparently this sometimes is. Fly right through a sign, because it's drive throughable, and oh dear. That zone there could have gone a lot worse than it did. It feels like the... Incline adjustments on the mountains really catches out a lot more than the ETK and I'm braking. Don't want to turn too tightly though because this can and will roll. As you saw back there, I was a little too crazy with it and I was able to roll quite easily. Now, there is a lot of power here but I think it should be used under a can rather than should basis. So I'll get an incredible kick of understeer. You see that? Oh dear. As I say that, I was just accelerating to show how kind of dangerous it can become. And that happened. What has happened to that bonnet though? Can I, can I actually get my mouse? Come on. My mouse just stopped moving. Oh dear, I've bent the chassis up and I've lost the door. Goodbye door. Come on. We've got one door left. Hang on to it. Uh, I want to do two laps with this, but sadly I don't feel that will be the case. I did with the other Malooch. Mind, I was travelling nowhere near as quick. This just has so much capability. I can't go full power because I just went full power and we saw the consequences were not worth it. Surprisingly, I have all four wheels attached with tyres, so I guess that's a positive we can take away from it. If it can hold that up, we will have the finish line of the second lap in sight, but I fear it can't. I really do. The hill should be no problem with all this power and all this grip. Mind, I think it is on race slicks as well. So, not designed for off-roading, but still has incredible grip off road I don't know. Beam logic, I guess. Come on. Somehow keeping it stable. This is a lumpy, horrible section, where Maluches are far better than you would actually expect them to be. I think they're secretly muscle cars in disguise, <laughs> because they, they just should not cope so well as they do here. Where all the front-wheel drives I messed with along here had destroyed front axles, this survived. You're a Malooch. You're a cheap car for communist people who don't have much money, so you're not exactly supposed to be this tough. 
Unless there's been an update to it or something, and then they have made it incredibly weak. I did get an update, but I wouldn't think it would change things that drastically. Ouch. Ouch. I'm, I appear to be keeping it in the high-end part of the power band, and that was an odd cliff road to take. Come on. Oh, dear. No, I should not have gone that close to the cliff edge. It's fun and terrifying at the same time, and I don't have a wall cage or even a right-hand side door to protect me at this point, so it's probably not a good idea. That's even my waste driver's spine has survived through all this torture. Come on, understeer. Oh, dear. Come on. I should have got this in dark green. Then it'll be a crazy version of a hitchhiking car in my summer car. Oh. Come on, and another wall for luck. No, apparently we don't get another wall for luck. I, I had to say anything. If I didn't say get another wall for luck, it wouldn't have bothered. It would have bothered, but yeah. Come on, no. It was, it was in the middle of a wall there and it just stopped. I hope you saw that as well as I did. And there's a random dent on the roof. Is that just all the pressure that the door couldn't protect it from? Because there is no door. Somehow, this vehicle still goes. And the radiator as well. Like the ETK, it isn't damaged. But more surprising in this, because it's a 450 horsepower... Uh, would I call it a nightmare? It's, no, it's not a nightmare. It handles better than that. But... It is scary. A 450 horsepower machine of fear is probably the best way I can describe it. Ugh. All these bumps. All these bumps out here. Come on. No, don't tip over. I felt that. The bank there thankfully helped me because I didn't tip over when I was on it. It did kind of help with the curvature of the car and preventing it from tip over. Oh dear, that was a bit too much power. I did floor it, I think. I think I floored it. Yep, there we go. There's certain parts of a course you can floor it, but then you have to brake immediately after just to maintain control. So much fun, though, when you do actually finally get the chance to floor one of these. You know, it, it really is crazy fast, and there's just the grip here to deal with it. It's not like a vehicle that can't handle all its pace. Oh, there's a scary downhill section. As we come up to the horrible hill, which it will inevitably conquer, I think, with all this power. Oh, dear, break, break, break. Yeah, I think I just have to go in first gear because it's getting a bit chucked about. Feels like it's straightened out a bit, though. It was pulling to the left. That happened before as well, actually. I had a burst tyre on one side and a kind of heavily cambered wheel on... The other side on the front of the other Malooch, the far lesser powered one, and it did actually balance out. And I think, oh dear, no. Don't tell me I've broken it. No, I may have slightly damaged the steering, but it's not broken, thankfully. I should not have done that, but I didn't really see it coming, so little choice did I have. I'm pretty sure, if used properly, this is a quicker car than that EZK we just had round. So, I guess I'll have to try and do that on the second lap. Try and use it properly. Try and work out its flaws. Try and work out where it's good. And I think I am working it out. I'm working out I can occasionally use full throttle, but very, very occasionally. Because it's a very complicated vehicle to drive, that must be said. Oh dear. Try and get into this corner. Going wide, but that's fine. Did I actually use my power to get me out of an issue there? But it's, it's feeling pretty horrible here. Ooh, water. Ah, no. Oh, that was, that was terrifying. I thought I'd actually thrown it off the cliff, but it was like, it was like you're going off the cliff. You have no choice now. It wasn't a kind of, I've made a stupid mistake. I think I've broken one of my front tyres, thankfully. So, all in all, it should affect cornering, but power delivery should be okay. Yeah, it, it really does pull to the left now. 
but power delivery feels largely uninterrupted. Although I'm unlikely to be flooring it in the same way unless I lose another tyre or again camber it in such a way. Come on. It was easier to reverse at that point. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm going to have to try and reset this. So I will be back. So it looks like I've somehow got this back. That wheel on the rear right does not look healthy though. And I've lost another door and another rear bumper. <laughs> it's weight saving, seriously. I don't think I even have a seat to sit on. So basically I'm sitting on the floor doing this. How would your spine ever cope? Makes me wonder. I don't know. They just came off when I put the vehicle down. But I think mechanically it's fine as it was. Uh, not when I reset it with F7 and dropped it onto the floor, though. Then it just destroyed the vehicle. But I did use a save and load feature, which works quite well, as you would expect. It really makes this stuff possible. If it didn't add that feature to the game, it would have been a nightmare trying to do this. I wouldn't be able to fall off the mountain and continue. I would have had to just give up at that, which would be a shame for a car in many cases, because a car would, just before it fell off the course, be perfectly fine and perfectly working. Now, I think this can make another lap. Will it be a comfortable lap? No. It'll be basically a catrum <laughs> with no bodywork on it at all. As you'll see, we have lost some parts already and we're losing the bonnet, which is now kind of wildly flapping. So, that is not great. But I think I can work this out. I think I can negotiate with the vehicle and get it to the end. There's always a chance I can't, but I will try my hardest. I will have had one lap after this, so although it won't be a good lap, it will at least have got through, and it will at least not be giving the Malooch the horrible I can't do a lap because I'm too weak name. Those are going to be the cars at the very bottom of the table, and I keep spinning it. I think it's the steering alignment just being so messed up, and... I can barely see a thing. I think I'm going to have to change a view unless... No, the bonnet's got out of the way. Thank you, bonnet. That was very convenient of you. Uh, dear, come on. Speed. Use speed to save me. Shift into a third gear, so... Should hopefully recover. Has my bonnet gone or has it just flapped down so low I can't see it? I don't know and I honestly don't care at this point. I can see again. On to the second course lap. There, the bonnet pops up again to say hello. But on to the second lap, we are okay. Although I am a bit squirrely, I'm just about keeping control of it. Come on. Oh, I've lost the rear wheel. I thought I'd lost one of the front wheels. That's disappointing. Come on. I would say I'm going to have to give up on this, but I will not. The vehicle deserves as much a chance as any other vehicle, even if it has become a bit of a nightmare to drive. Come on. I really hope I can recover, though, from that front crashy kind of, how do I say it, uh, time period. Delicately does it. Delicately on the power. Oof. I can't quite manage this. My mind, my mind is working so hard I can't talk. We didn't see that with the ETK. The ETK we saw I was talking because my mind just had so much free time. My mind was like, hey, I'm piloting this car, sure, but would you like to talk? And I was like, yeah. Has the engine gone off? Oh, yes, it has. And we keep going with what's left of this vehicle. Seriously, not much. I say, I'll say it now, though. This vehicle will not be at the bottom of the table. Even with the poor time it's already got. Because... It's going to actually hit the finish, and no, I need to get back onto it. That is an odd bonnet. But yeah, it is going to get to the end. And it is going to 
not lose because of that. Although it will be far from the top of the leaderboard. It's just too difficult. Come on. There's just not much I can do. The wheels are completely twisted. I will keep driving you. And I will keep driving you until I can no longer drive you. Oof. Although I think the Maluch is just given up. It's holding a white flag up. But I'm still forcing it to drive. Oh dear. Come on. Somehow, somehow this is still going. That is the most remarkable thing. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I think I'll leave it here, though. <laughs> because seriously, it's just going to keep falling over. And it will never beat the first lap when it does that. I'm going to leave it here, then. And move on to the next vehicle. And I'll also let you see the crash, because why not? Into the sea. Come on, I think we can stop at that. It's already in the sea now. And the lights somehow still work. Moving on. Okay, so next up we have the cement mixer of doom. Yep, 5,000 horsepower in an otherwise stock T-series cement mixer. A vehicle which we've known to be top heavy in previous series. What could possibly go wrong in 3, 2, 1, and a go. As I was saying, what could possibly go wrong? Because this is, after all... The beastie of them all. Come on. Yeah, I was saying top heavy, and that is why I'm taking a slightly odd line through all of this. I'm really delicate, though, because even if I do technically have the power to use, I can feel it tipping, and it is not by any means a reassuring kind of activity that it's doing. There is locking differentials as well, but I don't think I'll need them. So, we'll be going in open mode. I mean, what is it to say? It's terrifying. I have removed some of the squeaking noises, which are like nails on a chalkboard to me, as they say. We've got to slow down a bit for here and take a wider line, I think. There is speed, though. You'll see, we're going over 70 and... I really need to slow down. The thing is, that Malooch gave me a real perspective of speed. And when I tried to drive this before, I was flying off in, in all kinds of directions. So, the only real way out of it is just to be incredibly careful and hope. The second is probably more use, let's be honest. Oh uh, dear. Slow into here. The, the chassis flexes a lot. I'm noticing that. I'm noticing a lot of chassis flex. Even if it doesn't filter through as much as the Malooch. It, there is definitely flexing here. They have a surprising amount in common, actually. They're both overpowered vehicles, which really shouldn't have the power. Which are really past the sell-by date, I guess you could say. Um, Can we get into it? Yeah, I think I'll take a wider line. I was thinking of... Trying to take a tight line through there, but I couldn't because, you know, it tips over. It's a cement mixer. Although it might not look like it now, you just have to examine the line I'm taking a little more closely to see that. Ooh. You see there, it was getting a little uncontrollable. What did I do? I went wider, even if it ran me the risk of hitting the mountain, because that was what I had to do. The reason I've given it such a powerful engine, well, it's available, let's be honest, but it had to have more power as well if it was ever to make it up the steep slope. Because I've tried certain muscle cars, and at least with the lower trim engines in them, they just can't make it up the hill. So the power was the way I saw that it would be able to climb. 
I'm flooring it now, and it's 5,000 5, horsepower, but in a truck, so you're never going to see complete 0 to 60 in 3 seconds, unless maybe it's a waste truck, maybe that would manage it, but this not so much. I can floor it through here just for a moment, but that is a very tight corner, so I'll have to be slow and delicate. Really slow and delicate describes this vehicle <laughs> in about every possible way. Although it isn't that slow in itself, but it's just you can't ever use the speed. This corner, I'm getting a very good approach for, but so I should need one, because if I end up getting this at the wrong angle at the wrong time, it's going to punish me. There's just no way around accepting that truth. Oh dear, I don't want to overweather it, but I am looking like I'm increasingly going to overweather it. Oh dear, the unpredictability of open differentials is not being nice to me right now. Shift down to third. Come on! I just had no power there, because the terrain is hard to decipher, it's hard to know. With this terrain, what you're doing, and it was really tipping onto the right there. You, again, may not have seen it, but I could feel it. I could feel that it was going to tip, that it wanted to tip, but I had to stop it. Again, we're going wide, even with it tipping. It's all I can do at this stage. There's just so much weight here. So much unsprung weight, is it? No, so so much spung mass. I can remember my terms. It just takes me about ten years to eventually get them into my head. Come on! All the speed and I need to break. This is a bit of a hill, so maybe I should carry a bit more speed here, but still go wide. Fourth gear seems to be quite nice. Oh, it is monstering its way up this hill. Whoa! There's cars that don't get up here this easily. Amazing. Probably the one thing it does do amazingly at. I'm going to slow here. Oh, you heard those noises though. They were possibly just a suspension hitting the bottom of the cement mixer bed. It is not comfortable with this terrain, let alone at the kinds of speeds I would like to carry. The good thing, however, is I believe it's still immaculate. The good thing about careful driving in general, I guess. But in this case, I don't have much choice. It's either be really careful or tip over. Oh, again, you'll see there, it got really dramatically thrown, but what was I to do? It was about the best line I could have ever taken through there. And this is a tyre destroyer. Oh dear. I don't think I lose my front tyres. This has always happened though, there's no way to escape it. You just come onto this terrain and it eats tyres. I could probably try and delicately weave around, but I would be able to carry absolutely no speed that way. This is I guess where the joys of the open differentials come in though, because they're not going to try and put power to the wheel with the most grip they're going to send power to a wheel with a least grip, which means if a wheel's in the air, that'll get the power, and you're not going to suddenly get 100% of the power spinning up a wheel that really doesn't need all that power sent to it. It's, a, it's an odd way how it works. You'd think you'd want it on the wheel with the most grip, but you just don't. Unless you have very grippy tyres, then perhaps it would work, but you actually want to maybe send 50% of the power to a wheel with a most grip, no more, otherwise it just won't work. Problem is, if this isn't a good first lap, I may be doomed, because I've had my tyres, I've had my tyres burst, and then they can only get shredded from here. That's the only real worst stage that there could be. I'm just keeping this in one gear for most of the time, I think I need a brake gear though, and it was really tipping left there. But I managed to keep it under control enough. I'm going delicately down here. Not trying to carry speed particularly, just trying to survive. Now I'm worried about the steep hill with this because of the tyres. I, I believe it may be an all-wheel drive truck, which would be some help, that's for sure. But I don't know for certain that it is. Come on. Ooh. 
that was the bump though. I could go over in the ETK, but I could not go over it with this and I'd call that so close. It was tipping and I managed to hit a walk face, which if I went at it just slightly quicker, I guess could have chucked me off this mountain edge onto this road here where that would not have been wanted to be happening. Oh dear. I am not liking the feeling of rolling that this is giving me. I just don't feel at all reassured. It feels like it wants to attack and it feels like it's just awaiting the perfect opportunity. Come on, third gear, floor it a bit, but not too much that I want to tip over. Come on. Yeah, it, it's just staying in the low webs more than I would like now, or third gear. Come on. Yep. Ow. These bits are not comfortable. Of this car. Right, I know what I'm doing here. I'm going to try and tip it inwards just a little. At least on the front, and that should help me around the corner. Nice, whoa. I am terrified, okay? I may just sound bored, but I am actually legitimately terrified of this thing. Come on, uh, bubble, 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 bubble. My bonnet's still in shape, that's something, I guess. And I think my front tires are. Come on, I'm going to try and get some speed for the steep hill, but it does not feel like this thing is a fan of traction at all, that's for sure. If I could get a single lap, I would be surprised. Positively surprised, no doubt, but still surprised. I might have to try the school buses. If there is a quick enough version of them as well, I might have to try them someday. But for now, we've got this T-Series, and... It's not doing too badly. I mean, other than the tyre punctures, it is holding up. Nothing on the stage has really made it look and think like right, I'm just gonna snap in half now or something ridiculous so as far as strength goes I guess it's okay for that given it was never meant to be thrown down a rally stage and it said my engine's off but my engine is on very odd my wage age has survived so it would though with the way I've been driving this it's not really a way that a wage would smash and I just saw a face in the walk face <laughs> very funny to me at least and can we diesel around here? Yes, that's a nice grumbly diesel sound that I like. Come on. Bump. And will we make it up? That is the true question at this point. It looks like we will, just about. Fire! It's given up! Now, I'm gonna keep trying because, although it may sound ridiculous, I had one of these before and the engine was going, but it still managed to keep going for a while, despite the engine seeming to fall to pieces. It's just overheating. I mean, I would never have expected that. I was not looking at the heat meter, but now I do look. It's remarkable that it was so high. I guess it's just that I'm stressing it, but you'd think something like this would be designed to be stressed. Maybe I put the wrong radiator on or something. I don't know. No? Doesn't want to climb. Sadly. I gave it a fair chance. I tried. But it's just that is the reason. If we just zoom in. Right there. Maybe had that wheel had some tyre left on it, we would have been able to climb. But at this point, I don't think we can, unless we do have locking diffs, as I said, and I've, as I've just remembered. So what key did I have assigned to it? No. Well, I think I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> An odd place to do things, but it's not the worst. Maybe I could have climbed it, but either way, for there, I'll leave it here today and say goodbye until another day.